Today I want to talk about time, about our past, our present, and the vast expanse of our future. You see, the power of time is an extraordinary thing. It is a constant, relentless force that marches forward, minute after minute, day after day. And yet its true power lies not in its constancy, but in its potential. The potential that each moment holds. Consider this. The next 10 minutes can shape the next 50 years of your life. Sounds dramatic, doesn't it? But it's true, because every moment is a fresh start. An opportunity to make a choice that can ripple outwards, influencing not just your immediate future, but the trajectory of your entire life. So, how do we harness this power? It starts with a choice. A choice to listen to yourself, to others, to the world around you. To listen to your instincts, your passions, your dreams. To listen and to learn, because every moment is a chance to gain a new understanding, a new perspective. Next comes reflection. To reflect on where you've been, where you are, and where you want to go. To dig deep, to question, to challenge. Reflection is the tool that helps us make sense of our experiences to find meaning and purpose in our journey. And finally, we act. We take what we've learned from listening and reflection, and we put it into action. We make decisions. We take steps. We move forward. And with each action, we shape our future minute by minute, day by day. This is the power of time. It's the power to redefine success, to carve out your identity, and to craft a life that's authentically yours. It's not about racing against the clock, but about understanding that every tick of the clock is a chance to learn, to grow, to become the person you want to be. So, as we go on this journey together, remember this. The power of time is in your hands. Use it wisely, use it well, and watch as the next 10 minutes shape the next 50 years of your life. Let's start with success. What is it? How do we define it? We often find ourselves caught up in the whirlwind of societal norms, measuring our worth by the yardstick of wealth, fame and power. But today, let's pause for a moment. Let's challenge these norms and ask ourselves, is this what success truly means to us? Or is it perhaps something more personal, something that resonates deeply with our individual spirit? Consider this. What if success was the feeling of contentment that washes over you when you've done something meaningful? What if it was the quiet satisfaction you feel when you've made someone else's day a little better? What if it was the joy of being true to yourself, of living life on your own terms? In the grand tapestry of life, success is not a universal concept, neatly packaged and identical for all. No, it's a unique, vibrant thread, varying in color, texture and pattern for each one of us. It's the culmination of our dreams, our passions, our values, and our hard work. So let's redefine success. Let's make it more than just a trophy to be won or a goal to be achieved. Let's make it a journey of self-discovery, of growth, and of fulfillment. Let's make it about living our truth, about embracing who we are and what we stand for. Remember, success is not a race. It's a marathon. It's not about who reaches the finish line first, but who enjoys the run. It's not about the applause at the end, but the harmony in your heart. It's not about emulating someone else's life, but about crafting your own masterpiece. So let's break the mold. Let's challenge the status quo. Let's redefine success on our own terms. Let's make it personal, make it real, make it ours. Because at the end of the day, success is personal. It's not one size fits all. It's living your life in a way that feels right to you, not just doing what's expected, now let's talk about the journey of self-discovery. It's not about adding more to your life. It's about letting go. Letting go of the fears, the doubts, and the expectations that hold you back. This is not about emptying your life, but about creating space. Space for growth, space for freedom, and space for authenticity. This is the power of elimination. When we eliminate what doesn't serve us, we make room for what does. It's like removing the clutter from a room. With each item you discard, you can see the space more clearly. You can move more freely. This same principle applies to our lives. Imagine your fears, your doubts, your old habits as clutter. They take up space. They obscure your vision. They impede your movement. Now imagine letting them go one by one. With each fear you release, each doubt you discard, 
Each old habit you eliminate, you're not just decluttering your life, you're decluttering your mind, your heart, your soul. You see, elimination is not just about removing, it's about creating. Creating space for new experiences, new ideas, new possibilities. It's about making room for the things that truly matter to you. The things that bring you joy, fulfillment, peace. But it's not just about letting go, it's also about learning. Every mistake, every setback, every disappointment has a lesson to teach us. They're not just obstacles, they're opportunities. Opportunities to learn, to grow, to become stronger, wiser, better. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to fail. Embrace your failures, learn from them, then let them go. Let them go, not to forget them, but to free yourself from them. To free yourself from the fear, the doubt, the guilt they may bring. Remember, every mistake, every setback, every failure is a stepping stone on your path to success. They're not there to stop you, they're there to guide you, to push you, to challenge you. So own your mistakes, learn from them, and then let them go. Think of your life as a masterpiece in the making. You are the architect. Each day, each moment, is an opportunity to lay down another brick in the edifice of your existence. But what material are these bricks made of? They're composed of your choices, your actions, your values. Now consider the principles on which you're building your life. Are they fleeting trends or timeless truths? Are they external expectations or internal convictions? The quality of these principles directly influences the quality of your life. Integrity, for instance, is a foundational principle. It's about being true to yourself, even when no one is watching. It's about aligning your actions with your words, your values with your choices. When you live with integrity, you build trust, not just with others, but with yourself. Kindness is another essential principle. It's about treating others and yourself with compassion and respect. Kindness softens the edges of the world and warms the hearts of those it touches. It's a bridge that connects us, a language that everyone understands. Perseverance is the principle that keeps you going, even in the face of adversity. It's about resilience, determination, and an unwavering belief in your potential. It's about understanding that failure is not the opposite of success, but a stepping stone towards it. These principles, integrity, kindness, perseverance, are not just bricks in your life structure. They're the cement that holds everything together. When you build your life on these principles, you create a life of meaning, a life that withstands the test of time. But building a life of meaning is not a linear process. It's not about perfection, but progression. There will be times when you stumble, when the bricks fall, when the blueprint seems blurred, and that's okay. Because remember, it's not the fall that defines you, but your willingness to get back up. That's resilience. That's strength. So pick up the bricks, dust off the blueprint, and keep building. Because your life, your masterpiece, is worth every effort. So, what about the next 50 years? What do they hold for you, for me, for us? The answer, my friends, isn't written in the stars or hidden in some crystal ball. It's in our hands, in our hearts, and in the choices we make each and every day. It's in the moments we choose courage over comfort, authenticity over conformity, and resilience over retreat. It's in the whispers of our hearts that we choose to listen to, in the dreams we dare to chase, and in the values we stand up for, even when the world seems to be sitting down. It's in the kindness we extend to a stranger, the forgiveness we offer to a friend, and the love we give without expecting anything in return. It's in the battles we choose to fight, the causes we choose to champion, and the legacy we choose to leave. So what about the next 50 years? They're not just about getting older. They're about getting bolder, wiser, and more compassionate. They're about growing into the best version of ourselves. Not for the world to see, but for us to feel, to live, to cherish. It's about painting the canvas of our lives with colors of our choice, not the shades handed down to us by society. It's about dancing to the rhythm of our own drums, not the beats dictated by the world. It's about writing our own story, not just reading the one written for us. What about the next 50 years? They're about learning and unlearning, about falling and rising, about breaking and healing, about losing and finding. 
They're about living, not just existing. They're about being, not just doing. So, let's embark on this journey with hope in our hearts, dreams in our eyes, and courage in our souls. Let's make the next 50 years a testament to our strength, our spirit, and our resilience. And remember, the next 10 minutes can indeed shape the next 50 years of our lives. How will you choose to spend yours?